Today I'm going to take a try with Tuner Pro um, RT and see if I can get a different set of data than I did with the Win ALDL. Um, I'm going to say is I think this controller in my 85, uh, I think it's the only year they used this one. And I'm a little, I'm going to say I'm a little disappointed at the moment that I can't get more data or better data. Uh, so far, I have to run it in 10K mode. And I haven't been able to get it to produce data or continue to produce data with 10K disconnected. And that upsets the spark timing and the idle speed. <clears throat> the second one is, I'm still not, it seems there isn't anything in the data stream to give me either spark timing data or knock sensor data and again that limits if you're going to try to provide data to do some tuning um, you know that, that that's a, a, a big thing so I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna set this up on my laptop uh, with this to, for it to do a screen record and I'm gonna go out and take a drive and we'll see how it goes Okay, everybody, I've been out collecting data. This uh, will be uh, a, a data review and a tool review. Um, so I started out with uh, Tuner Pro RT. And it, those of you who have seen some of my other videos know I went through Win ALDL. And the whole point of this exercise is to understand what your engine is doing, what your computer controlled engine is doing, and what the ECM signals are that are being uh, produced for you. WinALDL Win was a pretty good tool um, and, and it has some features that uh, Tuner Pro RT doesn't have uh, and Tuner Pro RT has some features that WinALDL doesn't have so it may be one of those things where we end up needing to use both of them from time to time. Um, but anyway, I, I went out and took a short run and you know, it was about five minutes or so of data maybe a little less. Um, and I got a screen show running here. I'm going to show you the data. So uh, first thing is uh, if you go in here to and you need Tuner Pro RT to be able to get real-time data and right now what I'm showing here is the screen for the ALDL data off of a GM uh, ALDL port. And if you come up here to the tools and you go to this one that says ALDL data logging and setup, you get this screen here and I've already got this set up. I'm using a file, uh, uh, let's see, 1f.xdf, so I'm using an xdf file that I got from the Tuner Pro site for my controller because you need to have the right file for your controller. I currently don't have a bin file up. Um, they've got a proposed bin file and I've been digging around uh, through other sites on the internet looking for a good one that matches my controller and matches my prom tuning. Um, but in any case, um, right now what I have is the data stream definitions from Tuner Pro RT and you know, I, I had come through here and you see this one down below here that says begin monitoring. Um, when you hit that button, if you're connected and it's got a data stream, you hit that button and it'll start collecting a file. So over here, we're up in the in this part of the box where it says data logging. Uh, it says Tuner Pro RT bin definitions test one. This is where the log file is. And so what I'm going to show you in a moment is, is I've already selected this log file and I'm going to show you what the data looks like there and then down below here is um, it says export selected, export selected session to CSV and CSV is just another form of a text file that you can import into Excel or LibreOffice uh, or another spreadsheet and I'll show you some of the data. I've done that and I'll show you what's available that way. 
when you run WinALDL, you get everything out to text files and you post-process it. Uh, uh, this tool, you'll sit, um, you, can, you can play it um, uh, in the tool and see some of the data. One is, I've set up, this says ALDL dash, I've set up this dashboard with these parameters on it. And I can change those parameters. These are just arbitrary ones that I picked. If you do a, like a right click on here, you get a pop-up box. And you select the parameters you want. Like right now it says vehicle speed. Um, you know, if I wanted temperature, I can hit mat, and there it is. I'll go back and put vehicle speed on it again. Uh, so you can get the ALDL dash. You can get this one that says ALDL values. So this is sort of like the live scan data. Uh, there's one that's called flags, and that has the the different you know are you rich lean are you in drive or park and so forth and do you have malfunctions so that's on the flags page it's kind of like what was in WinAL ALDL where you had some flag uh, data and some sensor data uh, monitors this I've I've run this this is uh, the plot of my data set and you can play that kind of in real time, but you can see I got engine vehicle speed, pulse width, um, mass airflow, and you can, again, you can pick the parameters you want, and you come up here and hit this play button. Well, see, I just wiped it out, but uh, because it's going to start over, and it's going to start playing from over here at the right-hand side. And you can pause it, and you can stop it, but I've got, the current, I've got that current log session up and running. So if I go back to the dash and I hit hit the go button, uh, this is a live replay of what I collected when I was out on the road. In the beginning, it's not doing a lot. Let me drag it over here. There we go. We'll drag it over here a little ways to where where things are active. And you can see all the variables change. You can go to the values page and you'll see them change in this list. So this is kind of cool because this is what you can get in the tool. Um, something I'm not going to touch on today, but if you look over here, you have this whole list of uh, tables and constants and so forth. There's nothing in them right now because I don't have a bin file open. Uh, but if I can find the bin file for the prom, I should be able to read the parameters that are in there. Um, otherwise, if I, I would have to take out the prom that's in my vehicle and find a tool that will read it and export the data. I don't have one of those. But I'm, I'm kind of thinking that I can find uh, where somebody's already done that work for me. And it'll at least show me what, uh, what the factory calibration was. And again, that's for another day. But, so right now, as I, I said, I'm, I'm playing back data on all of these different tabs and uh, in the current data file. And I'll just mention again, you know, I've gone through with, with WinALDL and, and even here, uh, this load variable comes up in a single value. I think this is the LV8 term. And it comes up as a single number, like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I don't think I've seen it go above eight. But I, it doesn't seem to be tracking uh, any of my para other parameters. So I'm still not quite understanding. I'm not a controller engineer. I'm an engineer, mechanical engineer, tra trained as a mechanical engineer. Um, and I do a fair amount of electronic stuff. But I'm just not, I was just never educated in the depths of all the controllers, and I don't know what's in the code on this one. So, um, so I'm kind of learning as I go, too. But, but see, you can see the duty cycle for EGR is going from zero to max, and the load variable is not changing. So, seems kind of odd. If I go over here to bin definitions, you know, there are some places where you can see down here in the bottom where it says acceleration enrichment LV8 factor versus delta LV8. So they're using LV8 as a, as a factor in some of the tables. Don't know yet what it means, but just a caution. So 
Now from here, I'm going to go to my Excel table. And the difference between here and WinALDL, so I've, I've pulled this in, and this is um, my Tuner Pro data log. And some things that are different. So in WinALDL, they did things in seconds. It was time-based. In this one, it's by sample number. So my whole data file here is um, 248 samples. That's how many I did. You know, times about one and a half seconds a piece. So I was probably about 500 seconds, you know, a little less than 10 minutes of data. I did a little shorter on this one. Um, let's see. So vehicle speed, engine speed, TPS is in volts instead of in percent. Uh, here's coolant temperatures in Fahrenheit. They also give them in uh, Celsius, but I did not, I just hid those columns so I didn't have both. Uh, mass air flow in grams per second. Injector pulse width in milliseconds. The BLM, the sh short term integrator, the oxygen sensor, the crossover counts. Um, IAC duty cycle on the EGR and the load variable. Here's that load variable and you can see it goes from four, six, seven. It doesn't change a lot. It goes up as high as eight. But it, I can't get it to I can't get this particular value uh, to track with another parameter that makes sense. You know it doesn't it doesn't seem to go with wide open throttle and high engine speed. Don't know. Just calling it out. Uh, if you take all those and put them into a chart, you end up with this mess. So I split things out. I started removing parameters so that you could get a look at things. So this one is focused mostly on mass airflow and EGR parameters. You can see vehicle speed TPS is down in the mud. It's the red one down there. Um, mass airflow injectors, uh, EGR and engine speed. So Again, I played this trick that I used before where I went to a minus 6,000 engine speed just to get the zero so I could get this one scaled up out of the way. And then you can see here's the mass airflow. And uh, when you come over here, there's a, you know, injector pulse width goes up, engine speed goes up, airflow goes up, EGR goes up, because I'm, at this point, I'm, uh, I'm jumping on the throttle and you can see how everything responds. That's kind of the point of this one. And this is the first hundred seconds, first little over a minute and a half. And then there's uh, from 100 to 250. And you can see how, how it goes through and how EGR and everything shifts and changes um, with my vehicle speed uh, flipping um, up and down. I'll move over here and there's the uh, I rescaled it. I took some things off the chart. So here you get a better look at uh, TPS in volts. Kind of flipping through here. It gets up a little over two and a half. And, um, and injector pulse width. So you can watch that injector pulse width follow the engine speed as you would expect. You want more fuel, you get more engine speed, more air. You need fuel to go with it to keep the air fuel ratio right. So. And then there are, you know, a couple of um, oddities, like right here, where I did jump on the throttle and I got a lot of pulse width momentarily, but the engine speed didn't change a lot. So I must have, um, I must have caused what I'll call acceleration enrichment. That uh, you know, I jumped on it, so it gave it a shot of fuel. Here's the second section from 100 to 250 seconds and just kind of a continuation and again you know you can watch how pulse width goes along with throttle here's one with block learns and um, and integrator terms and you can see they're all you know here's you know around what am I at here Let's see what it pops up about 130 so the numbers are all pretty consistent here across the middle you got a bunch of them where they drop and these tend to be places where I've jumped on the throttle and things are, you know, engines accelerating hard, so it's it's going rich and you're getting a you're getting a reaction in those terms because you're not uh, running on the 
a stoichiometric point that it's aiming for, um, uh, normally aiming for. Then my last one here um, is an oxygen sensor based chart and um, down in the mud, uh, down at the bottom here is vehicle speed, here's engine speed and you can see as I'm going most of the time here um, you know, oxygen sensor is cycling back and forth and um, you know probably with somewhere around five or six hundred being the mean that you know it's it's, it's cycling back and forth through. You can see the red is the cross counts and it does like it does other times. So it counts up to cross counts up to like 255 and then it drops and typically drops and starts over and um, it oscillates back and forth and runs out through, through all the time. I'm just going to say as for a first cut um, again this looks like pretty good data. Uh, my car is running fine. I don't have a problem at the moment. But what I really wanted to do was get some tools. One is to consider the possibility of doing some tuning um, either myself um, or supply data to one of the chip manufacturers that you know there's some folks out there that will make a custom chip for you uh, that could you know perhaps adjust spark timing things to go with my cam a little better. Uh, but the car really runs nice, so I'm really not in a hurry. And I wanted to capture some good data sets while the car's, uh, I'll say, operating normally without trouble. If your car was not operating normally, you know, this would be a good way. You know, these kinds of tools uh, will give you some of the clues that you need to understand why your car is not working properly. And... Uh, so these are some of the parameters. Um, I'll probably have more to come as I, I said, I've got bin files I want to go dig for. And um, now I've got a couple tools in hand that I can use to, to help me dig a little bit deeper. So, so that's all for now.